the very first day, I, my dad just kind of dropped me off. And there were loads of like parents hanging around and people saying, oh yeah, my parents came and they moved me in. And my dad went, nope, drop the stuff in, you, bar, now. And I was like, yes, sir, I'm going, I'm going, don't worry. I was in a thermal physics lecture with young Mal and he decided that he was going to do a liquid nitrogen experiment and he poured a whole kettle of boiling water into like a huge tub of liquid nitrogen and obviously there was like a huge explosion and it like cut out all the electrics in the lecture theatre and he like couldn't carry on and the tech people were really angry with him because he'd like messed up all of the electrics in chemistry. My main group of friends was just uh, a lot of people from my tutor group, there's about five of us and we were kind of out on a night out and one of my friends in my tutor group accidentally mass texted his whole, uh, everybody he had in his contact list asking if they wanted to go out, which included our tutor. Um, <laughs> and he actually found it really funny, our tutor is um, Mike Merrifield. And he replied, to, <laughs> he replied basically being like, I'm not sure this was meant for me, but I hope you have a good night. <laughs> I think I really enjoyed the introductory MATLAB stuff because I hadn't done any coding or anything before. And it all kind of just feels a bit like a puzzle the breadth of like new physics um, suddenly there was a little bit more about understanding the physics you know how can we use the physics how can we apply this what are our thoughts on it? especially with stuff like the frontiers uh, module that was really, really nice seeing how physics you know works in the real world as opposed to when you do a levels where it's just this is a formula memorize it put it in the exam i actually found it quite a nice change from school it was quite different but um one of the things i really enjoyed about it was just being around so many people who are so passionate about the subject. I love the classical physics that we learned in first year. In the newton Einstein module, that is the physics I came here to do. I absolutely love that. And it taught me skills that I needed to explain the world around me. And that was exactly why I did physics. My friend James used to host at about two or three in the morning, I think, every week, Game of Thrones viewing sessions in his room in Crips. And a load of us would like just go and pile into his room, like 10 of us bringing like cushions and stuff um, to watch Game of Thrones every week. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, my biggest struggle was definitely labs. Uh, I really struggled with writing lab, lab um, plans and knowing where to go with the lab plan. Um, so I was just a bit like, well, I haven't done the experiment. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and, I became, and it used to really worry me that people just think I was a moron, really, because I'd be writing like, well, we'll try this, we'll try that. I'd be like, clearly, no. Um, but I think just realising that actually the people who are marking it have been in my position. People marking it have been in my position. They didn't know that they didn't know the experiment, and actually, it's not about getting it right. It's about having an understanding experiment and seeing where you can take that. The pressure. Uh, there's a lot to do, and it's a big jump from A levels into university because the the nature of the content you're learning changes, and also the social pressures are completely different. Living away from home for the first time, I'm fending for myself. I've got my own stuff to sort out, as well as trying to learn a whole load of really hard physics. There's a lot to do. I actually really struggled with the jump between how you learn things at A-level and then how you learn things at university. So I actually found that there was a big gap and you almost come to university and lecturers expect you to know what they're talking about and I really felt like I didn't. Um, so I guess the way I overcame it was I studied with friends all the time and we helped each other out a lot. Um, I spoke to a few lecturers and just kind of got some peace of mind on things I was struggling with. Obviously yes and no. I kind of think to some extent I've always been quite shy. I wouldn't say like horribly like socially awkward but definitely not particularly confident and that does make it a bit difficult sometimes to make friends and if you're surrounded by so many people eventually you're gonna come in into contact with people that you just like and you get along with. But actually it was really easy to make friends and I made lots of friends in the foundation year and the first year. Um, I'd say my main friendship group in physics uh, it was probably my tutor group. My main friendship group, it was actually just mostly my tutor group. So when we came in on the first day, you know, you got, there was a put up on the board, you know, these are all your tutor groups. And I didn't really, I kind of chatted to a couple of people at that point, people sitting next to me and stuff. But we all just kind of put, got put in Mike's office together and just started chatting. 
and I think none of us really had any plans after our first tutor meeting in the morning so we were like should we go and find somewhere for lunch and it kind of just evolved from there. My group of friends that I currently have now um, started out as all people who do mathematical physics within Crips. One of my friends built a little group chat together and then it slowly expanded from sort of other people we knew. Um, but I wouldn't say it was until second year when I like really, really got close to them and was really happy with the group of friends I had. But it took me a little bit of time, I would say. I would have been kinder to myself. I need a lot of pressure on myself and feeling like I was struggling. Sometimes if you put that pressure on yourself, you just you only make it worse. I would say I should have partied more. I didn't party like at all in my first year. Um, I was in a long distance relationship and like I said, I was like worrying about making proper friends and I studied really, really hard because obviously I went abroad in my third year, but you apply in your second year, so the only results they have to base that on are your first year results. So I was conscious of having to work really hard um, so yeah, I didn't really go out or party at all and it was a wasted opportunity, I think I should have, I should have clubbed more. I got more involved with the university side of stuff in first year. Um, I actually, in first year, didn't join any societies um, long term. I didn't get involved with the SU elections, I didn't get involved with that side of stuff and I wish actually that I had got more involved because I've, certainly towards the end of my PhD I got really involved with the SU. Um, and I realised how much more you could do with it. Like I was thinking of running for an SU committee position, which is a bit late now, but had I got involved earlier, I might have experienced that side of university much earlier and been able to do more with it. I would have been a bit more relaxed because I think I was super stressed about everything. And I felt like everything had to be perfect. And if anything didn't quite go along to plan, I thought, oh God, right, no, I'm not good enough. This isn't working. And yeah, I had loads and loads of doubts. The amount of times I thought, why the hell am I doing physics, is too many times. If you enjoy physics enough, it will be worth it. And you feel like, yeah, this is tricky, but I'll keep on going. And that's when you know you really want to do physics. When it gets hard, but you keep on going. It doesn't matter. Um, I um, didn't go, when I was younger, I was, always jumping around to Oxford to study medicine um, <laughs> and I didn't get offered a physics place at Oxford um, they offered me material chemistry instead um, and it just was that was my whole world my whole life ruined at that point it doesn't actually matter you're gonna love Nottingham um, you will have loved anywhere you went and actually there are more things in the world than Oxford and Cambridge <laughs> I'm not sure I'd give myself any like big advice because I think Fundamentally, all the, the screw-ups and the, the, the things that have gone wrong at my time here, as well as the things that have gone right, have kind of shaped me into the person that I am today. So I wouldn't want to, like, pop my head through the magic portal and just, like, shout at 18-year-old me. It's like, oh, you, do this, this and this, because I'd be robbing him of the chance to figure it out. Actually, Nottingham wasn't actually my first choice. It was actually my reserve choice and I didn't actually end up getting the grades for my first choice. And a lot of people think, you know, that's the end of the world. But actually I've been so happy here at Nottingham. I mean, I stayed for another three and a half years after my undergrad of four years. So um, I've really liked Nottingham and it wasn't a bad decision at all. It wasn't the end of the world at all. So it all worked out. Um, you are 100% good enough to be here. Would probably have made things a bit better. That's probably the biggest thing hanging over my head, but I think that hangs over a lot of people's heads. I enjoy myself more. I think I spent too much time worrying and letting university get to me too much. I should have just had fun more and kind of let loose. You need to realise that not everybody is the same. Not everybody gets stuff the way you do, and you don't get stuff the same way the person with the highest grade does. Be content with how good you are and don't be upset the fact you're not at the top because it's okay and you'll still do fine and if you work hard and you're passionate about science and you care about physics, anything's possible. Grades are just part of the story.